YouTube channel. All right, so the plan today is to play through the entire level two uh, SCQF book. So for the level two guys, we've covered all of the theory lessons. So every theory lesson we need to do is covered. Still need to talk about embellishments, but um, embellishments is quite easy. We, we could talk about that very quickly. Um, so you should all have a copy of this book. If you've not got a copy, you don't need it just now. All right, don't stress about going to get it because it's on the screen. But you should all have a copy of this book at home. Don't worry about the YouTube channel. If you're one of the kids I teach in school, then you've have all got access to the Google Classroom. And you should all know how to hold the sticks by now. And it gives you a wee basic music reading description telling you about above the lines right hand, below the lines left hand. And again, this is all stuff that we've done before. And we spoke during our theory lessons about the stave bar lines, bars, repeat marks, and double bar lines. We've spoke about all of that. So, I think we're good to go. And I'm gonna try and get a size. There we go, perfect. That fits everything into the screen. So this page should be easy peasy for all of us. And I'm gonna talk very briefly about it. We're counting in simple time. So if we think back to our theory lessons, simple time is when the beat note can split in half. Okay, so we've got a crotchet there. We know if we split that crotchet in half, we get two quavers. If we split those two quavers in half, we get four semi-quavers. So we should know that. And if you don't know that, then that's a little reminder for you. Um, back when we done the duration table, we had the semi-breed, split in half, two minims, split in half, four crotchets. It's all stemming from that. So if I was assessing you guys, I would have probably got you to play one line at a time. All right, but for the benefit of this, we're gonna play one line after another. So we'll start with the first line. It'll be one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And then it would go straight into the second line. One and two and. And I'll do that and then we'll also go straight into the third line, which is semi-quavers, one knee yander, two e yander. And we'll finish with this group here stopping on that left tap. And you'll know you've got it right if when you finish, one knee and a two knee and a, you finish with that left tap. So hopefully you've got your sticks and pads there and make sure your mics are off just so we don't hear you on the screen record and we're gonna go for it from the top. Let's try it. After two, one, two, go, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, next line, one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two, third line, one knee and a two knee and a one knee and a two knee and a one knee and a one knee and a two knee and a and you would stop on that last left tap which is the tap there and I appreciate if you're watching this live that you'll not be able to rewind it Okay, but when I put this up on the Google Classroom and the YouTube channel, you can rewind it back to your heart's content. All right, and play it again until you're really comfortable with it. Because we're going to now play these bottom two lines. So we remember our crotchets were just one and two. So it'll be one, two. Our quavers were one and. And then another crotchet makes it two. Our next group, one knee and a. Same with quavers. Next group's quavers, two and, and last group crotchets, one, two. And you'll see we've got the repeat mark there and the repeat mark there. So we're gonna play that line twice. Okay, so let's do it. After two, one, two, one, two, one and two, one knee and a two and one, two. Repeated, one, two, one, and two, one knee and a two, and one, two, done. And again, like I said before, please feel free to rewind this when this video goes up online. And we're gonna do the second line, straight in with quavers, so it'll be one and, next group semi-quavers, two e and a, 
back to Quavers, one and, and a crotchet, two. Our next group, Quavers, one and, still Quavers, two and, semi Quavers, one knee and a finishing with a crotchet, two. And this one's repeated as well. So let's play that second line now. One, two, go. One and two, e and a one and two. One and two and one, e and a two. Repeated. One and two, e and a one and two. One and two and one, e and a two. And that's that line complete. And like I said to all the young ones I've been teaching, the reason we do counting exercises, it's not going to make you particularly stronger. It's not going to make you faster. Counting exercises are designed mainly for your timing, all right, to build up your sense of timing and rhythm. So we can play that bottom line to a strict beat. You're going to hear me tap my foot there. Okay. When I decide to take the tempo up, say I take it to there. One and two and a one and two. One and two and one and a two. We don't need to do that just now. But if we're quite strong at the early stages, then when it comes to boosting the tempo, we'll be okay with it. All right, we'll find it very easy. So that's why we do exercises like this. Our next page is counting um, again. But this time we're counting in compound time. So the first page we're splitting the beat note in half. All right, and this page we're splitting it into three. Okay, so Miram's just joined. Can you make sure your mic's off, Miram? Because I'm live. <laughs> we're recording this. So we're going to split these notes into three. All right, so I'm going to see if I can zoom in a wee bit more so we can see it clearly. That's better. So. When the crotchet's got a dot after it, remember we spoke about dots, a dot increases its value by half. All right, so half of a crotchet, and I'm gonna put it here in my right hand, would be a quaver. So I've got a quaver in my right hand here. In my left hand, I've got that crotchet. If I split that crotchet in half, I get two quavers. Added to this third one, I'm gonna bring it over here, I've got three quavers now. And you'll see, that's the three quavers there. All right, so again, the dot equaled a quaver, split the first crotch in half, and I get three quavers all together. So that's how we split it in three. So we're still gonna use the crotchets in count one, two. So this will still be one, two, one, two. But now, when we come to here, because we're splitting it in three, we can have crotchets and quavers, okay? So we've got a crotchet, which is longer, all right, and then the quaver, which is shorter. So we're getting long, short, long, short, long, short, long. And that's how you would play it. One, day, two, day, one, day, two. So it'll sound like that. One, day, two, day, one, day, two. So I think we should give it a go. And we'll repeat these lines as well. So I'm gonna do the first line with the repeats. One, two, go. One, two, one, two. Big stretch. One, day, two, day, one, day, two. Repeated. One, two, one, two, one, day, two, day, one, day, two. And that would be the line done. And when you get assessed on these, you won't be asked to play each line after another. You'll probably be told, oh, can you play the first line? Can you play the second line? You would do one line at a time. Usually you find as well, um, some assessors, if you play the first line, the second line really well, and they know like this guy's on the ball, they'll say, right, well, that's fine. We'll move to the next page. All right, they'll maybe not even want to hear you play the rest of it. I've seen that before. Right, second line, we've not got any of these one days or two days. They're all quavers and crotchets here. So it's going to be one day, two day, one day, two, one day, two day, one day, two. And when we play this, make sure we don't do triplets. Don't go one day, two day. Don't accent them. There's no accents. So it'll just be nice and chilled out. Let's play it. One, two, one day, day, two day, day, one day, day, two, then left, one day, day, two day, day, one day, day, two. Repeated, one day, day, two day, day, one day, day, two, then left, one day, 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 one day, day, two. And that 
this is done. I'm going to go straight into the next line. All right, because this one should be quite easy for us to read. It's just crotchets and quavers. So let's play what we see. Line number three. One, two, one, two, one, a day, two, one, a day, two, a day, one, two. Repeated. One, two, one, a day, two, one, a day, two, a day, one, two. And that leaves us with the last line, which you'll see we've got the one days and the two days in there. We've got the crotchet quavers. So when you see them, remember you're going to stretch it. So it'll be one day, day two, day one, day, day two. And then your next rhythm or group's the exact same, but starting on the left. One day, day two, day one, day, day two. So let's play that last line with the repeat. One, two, one day, day two, day one, day, day two. And then left, one day, day two, day one, day, day two. Repeated, one day, day two, day one, day, day two. One day, two day, one day, two. And I always say to folk, it's good to try and count it. You don't need to say it out loud, because right, I feel quite comfortable speaking and drumming at the same time. A lot of folk don't. That's fine. All right, but try and count it potentially before you play it. And if you can count it, maybe not even out loud, try and count it in your head as you're going and say it as you go. Because chances are, if you're able to say it, you'll absolutely be able to play it. And then I'm definitely going to need to zoom out for this one. I zoomed in way too much. So let's see what I can get down to to fit this in the screen. 30, that's fine. Oh, it's a wee bit small. Let's go 35, see if I can make it a bit bigger. Ooh, tempting fate. Let's go 40. Yeah, that'll do. So that fits in fine. Think back to the very first thing we played on this video. We've done one two, one, two, and then all the way to the end. And then we went straight into our quavers and straight into the semi-quavers. It's the exact same as that. The only difference is after the semi-quavers, we're gonna go back the way we came with quavers and then finishing with crotchets. All right, so for me, it's like walking up a hill. All right, you're getting to the top on the fastest bit and then you're coming back down. To the same as where you started or revving a bike all right you're going to slowly go faster 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 and then you're going to slow back down to where you came and the key to this one is following the notes and being confident at the end of each line going into the following line especially from the faster semi quavers to the slower quavers all right you just have to be confident all right play with a bit of belief and don't hold back let's do it one Two, go, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, next line, one, and two, and one, and two, and one, and two, and one, and two, next line, one me and a two me and a one me and a two me and a one me and a two me and a one me and a two, next line, one, and two, and one, two, and one. Finish it off. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And if I was assessing you, which I won't be, all right, because I teach you all, um, I can't assess you because I teach you, I would be listening to your transitions from each line to the next. All right, that's what I'd be listening for. Massively listening to make sure you're playing that in time. All the volume's the same, everything's nice and relaxed. You're not stressed and tightening up. And then we move on. Oh, jiggle. Paradiddles. Let's see, how big can I zoom in here? Way too much. Let's go back a bit. That's perfect. So, paradiddles, easy peasy for everybody that's on this video call. All right. All we need to do is play the paradiddles normally and finish on that left tap. And there's no accents on the first line. And for those that don't know what an accent is, that's an accent there. So when you see that little symbol above a note, it means you play that note louder than the notes around about it. 
Okay, so it's a note that's stressed or emphasized more than the notes around it. So it doesn't need to be levered, all right? It doesn't mean that you grip it and you rip it as hard as you can. It's not, that doesn't, it's not what an accent is. This could be an accent, okay? As long as the taps are round about it are softer than the, the, the accent. So I'm playing an accent there, all right? It doesn't mean that it's really loud. It's just louder than the notes around about it. So your first line, para do para do para do para do. We're going to keep it there. So no accents, nice and relaxed. Let's do it with the repeat. One, two, go. Para do para do para do para do para do para do para do. Tap repeated. it done. Our second line is the exact same, the only difference is we're hitting the first tap with each paradiddle. Paradiddle, paradiddle, paradiddle. And you'll notice at the end, if you spotted it, we're not finishing with an accent, we're finishing with a tap. So when you get to the end, don't do this. Paradiddle, tap. All right, because you will lose marks for that. We need to go paradiddle, tap. Paradiddle, tap. We just keep it the exact same and volume as the previous paradiddle. Right, let's go for it. After two, one, two, go. When I'm playing them, I'm trying to lift the opposite hand when I'm doing the double or the diddle in the para diddle. Para diddle. And I'm lifting, but I'm not lifting much. I'm just lifting up there. And that little lift is giving me the accent or the movement for the accent. You'll probably not get that straight away. That'll take a bit of playing. All right, but it's a good movement to work on. All right, because it means when we go to speed them up, it even faster okay so that you've got that movement to give you not just the accent but to give you the momentum to play the movement so do try and get that a little bit of a lift and we move on what's the next one triplets so let's zoom out perfect so triplets all right what a triplet is is if you have a look at the music you'll see that little um, tie, and it's got a three in it. That tells us that those no notes, sorry, are three irregular time notes played in, uh, or sorry, sorry, three compound notes played in simple time. So we played compound time earlier, all right, and we know that we had one a day, two a day, one a day, two, and it fitted because the beat note split in half. But in simple time, it doesn't. All right, in simple time. Or two four the rhythm is one and two and one and two so this group of notes don't fit so that's why we use this the triplet sign <coughs> to tell us that we're playing those three notes in simple time so we're not going one and and we're going one a day two a day and because we're doing triplets we can actually say triplet all right, so this is where it's up to you. All right, I'm going to do it both ways. When I'm playing them, I, I quite like to say one a day, two a day, one a day, two a day. Like I'll say it like I was counting the, the quavers on their own. If you prefer saying triplet, 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 then you say triplet. It's whatever helps you. Okay, so your first line, one a day, two a day, one a day, two a day. And again, don't worry too much about levering the accent. As long as it's bigger than the taps around about it, then you're golden. Right, let's do it. First line. One, two, one, eight, eight, two, eight, eight, one, eight. If 
you're clever, you'll see that the second line is the exact same as the first line. You're just starting on the left instead. So it's the exact same rhythm. So let's do it. One, two, one, baby, two, baby, one, baby, two, baby, one, baby, two, baby, one, baby, two. Repeat it. Triple it, 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 tap. Done. And for our next line, we're looking at each triplet and seeing if it's got an accent on it. So you see the first one does, second one doesn't. Next one does, next one doesn't. Next one doesn't, next one does, next one doesn't, next one does. So you'll see it follows a rhythm and it follows a nice wee pattern. So if you've not played it before, the best bet is look at it and play what you see. All right, play exactly what you see. And it should be quite easy for you. Well, we'll give it a go. Let's do it. One. Two go one a day two a day one a day two a day one a day two a day one a day two triple it 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 tap and again you have to just follow what you see okay so on this live stream I don't have time to rewind it or do it again. All right, so when I put it up online on the classroom or the YouTube channel, rewind it back and try it again. So if you didn't get it right the first time, I bet you, you get it right on the second time. And this is a good chance to check because the set last line is the same as the line above. We're just starting on the left this time. So it's the exact same pattern. Let's do it for the last line. One, two, one, maybe, two, maybe, one, maybe, two, maybe, one, maybe. And my advice for triplets would be keep everything low, nice and low there, because it means the accent doesn't need to come up too high, only needs to be there. So there's your taps, there's your accent. Same left, there's your taps, there's your accent. There's not much of a difference between the two. You don't want your triplets to be here, and then your accent has to be up there. All right, that's a bit too much effort, I would say. And our next one, long roll. So this, all this is, guys, is mummy daddies. All right, you've got to get the mummy daddy from slow all the way up to doubles and into our roll. So this is the one that will take you the longest. So I'm going to play it from slow. I'm going to gradually speed it up with you, and then I'm going to work it in our roll. And if you find that you're just absolutely nowhere near it, like you're like, I just can't get that, then be ready to spend a bit more time on it, okay? So especially when it comes to bouncing the sticks, like that, that takes a bit of time to get. And also speeding up the bounces. So let's do it from slow. We'll start, we'll count after two, we'll play it mega slow, and we're just gonna gradually build it up. So we're not gonna play it as written, because it starts off crotchets, quavers, semi-quavers, all the way to demis. Just build it up in our own esteem. All right, and for the benefit of this, I'll take each build up quite slowly. You would actually build it up a bit faster if you were doing the assessment. So let's start really chilled. One, two, so right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. I'm gonna start taking it up now. Left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. So you see how I'm starting to lift it up a little bit? So at this speed, we're not bouncing the sticks. You can't bounce the sticks, it's too slow. So I'm still holding the sticks, using my wrists, using my fingers, and using my thumb. I'm gonna take it up a little bit more now. What you'll find as well is the mummy daddy from slow to fast at the beginner and intermediate levels. A decent wee workout. <clears throat> you'll probably feel it. You'll start feeling it on your arms. Mummy daddy, 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 mummy daddy. So at this speed, I can start bouncing the sticks. that I'm lifting the sticks quite high to do the bounces for now. I'm not letting them drop yet. Mummy daddy, mummy 
need to do to speed up the bounces is move my hands up and down a little bit faster and control the sticks as I'm doing it. Mommy, daddy, mommy, daddy, mommy, daddy, mommy, daddy, mommy, daddy, mommy, daddy. And it, now we're at that speed, I'm just going to gradually work my way up. until I eventually end up on a roll. So I'm just taking up a bit more, a bit more. And notice as my hands is going faster. And then I'm going to bring my hands down and then push them in a roll. And that's me rolling. All right, and I'll hold the roll for maybe 10 beats. One, two, three, four. So the trickiest bit for me, I think, when you're learning it, is getting from here, where you're doing normal taps, and then getting the bounce. So if you're practicing any, if you can't do it really fast, the best thing to practice is sitting doing these. For as long as you can, trying to get that bounce with the stick bouncing in your hand. If you're not getting that, then take it down a little bit. All right. And another thing you can do to generate the bounce is sit and try and just bounce one hand at a time. So you'll see when I'm using my right hand there, I'm bringing my hand down once, but I'm getting two taps. So I'm letting the stick bounce into my fingers, and then I'm stopping it and just catching it. So I'm letting it bounce twice and then catch. That's a good thing to practice. All right, and you'll know you've got it, so you'll feel the stick bounce in your hand. Same with left. I'm bringing my hand down once, and I'm getting two taps. And I'm just catching it once I'm done. So I've done my two, then I'm catching it. Another thing I've seen a lot of folk do is they'll bring the stick down, and they just let it fall down. And the same again, they'll just let it fall down. They get used to that, and then once it's fell twice or bounced twice, then they catch it. So it's whatever helps you. So many different ways of doing that, okay? Right, our next page, it looks so confusing, it is unreal. I promise you guys, it really, really isn't. It's actually surprisingly easy, this page. So every single one of these here, I reckon I've played five stroke rolls, seven stroke roll, nine stroke roll, and 13 stroke rolls. We've all played them. Five stroke roll, last first tap. Seven stroke roll, seven stroke roll. A nine is two, four, six, eight, nine. And a thirteens, heavy, 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 heavy. We've all played those rolls. All right, but we need to show an assessor that we can play them broken down. All right, so all we're doing on your first line is playing the five stroke roll without any buzzes at all. It's just taps. So a five stroke roll on the right would be five stroke roll without any buzzes, right, left, right. On the left, it would be left, right, left. So you're getting right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Easy peasy. Your second line, if you have a look at it, you'll see it's still right, left, right, but he's put a little buzz symbol on the first two taps, so it becomes buzz, buzz, tap, buzz, buzz, tap. And when we do that one, we just close the buzz right up, buzz, buzz, tap, buzz, buzz, tap, Buzz, buzz, tap, buzz, buzz, tap. And then there's one on the third line which says written. You just open the buzzers up. Five stroke roll, five stroke roll, five stroke roll, five stroke roll. And you just play it as you normally would. So a lot of you might not have played five stroke rolls on the left. You'll have stuck with rolls on the right. Now's our chance to get a shot of playing them on the left. Okay? Ooh, coffee's nice. Right, let's do it. So just the five stroke rolls. So remember we'll start with right, left, right, left, right, left. So the first, second and third line. Ready, one, two, go. Right, left, right, left, right, left. Right, left, right, and then change the buzzes. Buzz, buzz, tap, buzz, buzz, tap, buzz, buzz, tap. And then third line, five stroke roll, five stroke roll, five stroke roll, five stroke roll. Okay, and you'll see all I've done on that third line is just open the buzz up a little bit, lift my hands, just allow myself to open the buzz up a little bit, 
and that was it. It was easy peasy. Okay, our next one, seven stroke rolls. All right, so that's these three here. It's the exact same as the five stroke curl. So if we play a seven, seven stroke curl, all we need to do to play it without the buzzers is change it to taps. Right, left, right, left. Right, left, right, left. You can also, if you want to, you can say triple lip tap. If that helps, you can go triple lip tap, triple lip tap. When I'm playing these, I say seven stroke roll. All right, I say seven stroke roll, seven stroke roll, seven stroke roll, seven stroke roll. I find that the easiest way to go about it. Okay, so let's do the seven stroke roll exercise. And again, we'll keep it nice and relaxed. So we'll start with the right. Three, four, seven stroke roll, left, seven stroke roll, right, seven stroke roll, left, seven stroke roll. And then buzzers, seven stroke roll, seven stroke roll, seven stroke roll, seven stroke roll, and then open up, seven stroke roll, seven stroke roll, seven stroke roll, seven stroke roll. Done. Okay? And again, if you're finding the left one tricky, seven stroke roll, then just try it a bit slower or play it um, with the recording again, you'll re rewind it back so you get another shot at it. Excuse me. Our next one is nine stroke rolls. All right, so for me, remember anyone who I teach for nine stroke rolls, we like to say macaroni cheese because it fits the movement. So a nine stroke roll to play, we would be macaroni cheese or macaroni cheese. So we're doing the same again, and we're just taking the buzzers out and playing it with taps. Okay, so with the taps will be macaroni cheese, macaroni cheese. Let's try it. One, two, so taps, macaroni cheese, left, macaroni cheese, right, macaroni cheese, left, macaroni cheese. Tight buzzers, macaroni cheese, macaroni cheese, macaroni cheese. Macaroni cheese. Open the buzzers. Macaroni cheese. Macaroni cheese. Macaroni cheese. Macaroni cheese. I'm hungry now. <laughs> Say macaroni cheese that many times has made me hungry. And our last roll is 13 stroke roll. So again, for folk that I teach, I like to say hickory dickory dock for a 13 stroke roll. Some folk I've heard say Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. I've heard folk count the triplets. I've heard folk go, um, what do we call it? Triplet, triplet, tap. Yes, triplet, triplet, tap. It's whatever floats your boat. I prefer hickory dickory dock. It's quite easy on the tongue and it's quite easy to, if we're saying it fast. Hickory dickory dock. We can say it quite quick. It's not a stress. So this is the same, it'll be right, left, right, left, so it'll be hickory dickory dock, hickory dickory dock. So we'll take it down a little tap, so I'll go hickory dickory dock, we'll play that speed. So remember with no buzzers first, right hand first, three, four, hickory dickory dock, left, hickory dickory dock, then right, hickory dickory dock, then left, hickory dickory dock, and then buzzers, hickory dickory I mean, I'm not going to comment too much, but I can see a few years finding the buzzers on the left a wee bit tricky. All right, so maybe you need to spend a bit of time on things like rolls on our left hands. And I believe that's it for exercises. Our next thing will be um, example drum scores, and then we should have monotones as well. Let's see, yep, so we've got monotones. So our example drum scores, right, we need to be able to play a couple of drum scores for the assessor. And I'm not sure if they're on the drum or not. If they're on the drum, you would just play it on the drum. All right, it's, it's not hard for us to play on the drum. Um, we'll probably 
as anyone that I teach, we'll probably not play this in the exam. We would play Scott and the Brave, I would say, if you know Scott and the Brave. If you don't, then I'll get you to play this. All this is, <clears throat> it's so easy, it's unreal. If you remember the mass band 2 4, where we went tap, bam, central, central, right, left, right, bam. It's that, but without any flams. And this is for the folk that I teach. There's no flams in it. Because in level 2, we've not been taught how to play flams. Which is mad. I know, because I've taught every single one of you how to play flams. But on this level, you don't need to know them. And because these guys are so awesome, you already know how to play flams. And on your first line of the score, it's showing you all the roles written note for note. So you've got buzz, 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 tap, buzz, 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 tap. All that is is a seven stroke roll. But you can see it here. That's how we would see it written. Seven stroke roll, seven stroke roll. Same for the second part. Hickory, dickory, dock. Or buzz, 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 tap. On the second line, that's how we would see it normally as 13 stroke rolls. Okay? So I'm going to play through this entire tune. Okay? If you want to play along, play along with me. So no flams. I'll try the hardest not to play flams because I know that there aren't any in there. And each part will be repeated. So it'll be left, right, seven stroke roll. Ready? One, two. Second part, tap, higgity, higgity, dock, tap, higgity, higgity, dock, left, right, center, go, center, go, right, left, right, higgity, higgity, dock, tap, higgity, higgity, dock, left, right, higgity, higgity, dock, and then repeat it. see as well what you'll find is for those who learn the mass band 2-4 you can actually play that for the level 2 exam so you know the way that I've taught it with the flams and things and um, I mean we've done some of you's done it where there's the full four parts of the back sticking and things you could play that you know it's it's more than strong enough for level 2 so if you find it easier you would actually play that I would say okay and the next one should be a 3-4 march, and it's going to be squint, so I'm going to try and see if I can flip it. Yep, and now we can't see it. Still can't see it. Now, <laughs> it's miles away. Let's see if I can get this a wee bit better. That'll do. So for me, I'm going to play through this for the sake of the video. Alright, but for all of the level 2 guys that I teach, you would actually play the 3-4 march that we've been through. And you would only need to play the first two parts of it. So you know the... Bam, you would only need to play that first part twice through with the repeats, and the second part twice through with the repeats. Alright, that's all you would need to play. But I'm going to play this one anyway, okay? So all it is, is tap, seven stroke roll, hickory dickory dot, tap, buzz buzz buzz, tap 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 tap, left, right, left, seven stroke roll, hickory dickory dot, tap, hickory dickory dot. And then what usually happens is you'll have the second line, the exact same thing, and then you repeat the top two lines. So you're actually playing it for quite a while. Alright, so let's do it. And if you want to play along, play along. 
All right, but uh, the Fest and Lodge guys, you will be playing the standard D4 that I've taught you already. So I'm going to click top to bottom. Oh, but what's the setting part? Duck. You said you'd do duck, 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 duck. Yeah. Just got it. Right, let's do it from the start. One, two, go. Tap, send, roll. So this is the final page in terms of exercises for us. The next page should be going on to musical theory, which is stuff that we should have all covered before. So we'll rip through these. All right, we should rip through them fairly quickly. It's the same as counting exercises. All right, you know at the very start of the book, we've done one, two, one, and two. It's the exact same as them, except they're all in the same hand. And it doesn't mean you have to play it on the right. You could play it on the right hand, play it on the left hand. You can actually just tap the table with these if you want. All right, because pipers will do the exact same exercise for their level two one. They've got to follow rhythms like this. For snare drummers, it's quite easy. For pipers, it's really, really not. They find it quite hard. So a lot of pipers will tap their hands. Some pipers will clap. If you want to clap, you clap away. I'm going to tap with one stick. Alright, so I'll use just my right stick. And then before we play each line, we'll count it. So remember, crotchets were one and two, quavers one and two hands, and that's all we're dealing with on this line. And there's no repeats. So it'll be one, two, one, and two, and one, and two, one, two, and. Easy peasy. Let's do it. One, two, go. One, two, one and two and one and two one two and and that's it our second line we're starting to incorporate rests so that's a crotchet rest and i'll count it as we go so it'll be one and two i'll say two but we're not going to play two and then dot and cut quavers so we'll go one day two so it'll be one and two one day two one and two, day one, two. So when you see the dots and cuts, remember the dot's gonna stretch the note and the cut will just cut it short. So let's play it. One, two, go. One and two, one, day two. One and two, day one, two. Okay, and again, you need to follow the music if you're finding that tricky. One and two, one day two one and two day one two easy peasy 
Right, our next line, looking at the time signature, it's 3 4, so we're now counting in threes. Alright, so instead of counting to two, we're going to count to three. And you'll see it here, we're going to go one, two, three, one and two, three and one and two and three, one and two, three. Let's do it. After two, one, two, go, one. Again, please don't be shy if you need to rewind this back uh, when it's uploaded. Um, next one's counting to three again. So we've got dots and cuts again, and we've got rests. So it's going to be one, day two, three, and one, rest. Three, day one, two, three, day one, two, and three. If you're confident following what the crotch it is, the flavours and the dot and cuts. Okay, this should be easy for you if you're confident with following them. If you're not, you maybe need to spend a wee bit more time with the counting exercises. Okay, let's do it. Ready? One, two, go. One, D, two, three, and one, two. And then our last two, before we finish the video, four fours, we're counting to four. Okay, so instead of counting to three, we're counting to four. And I'm going to go straight into this. It'll be one, two, three, and four. One, and two, and three, four. One, and two, and three, and four. One, two, three, and four. It's easier than you think. All right, you have to have confidence mainly to wait for those crotchets. All right, that's the biggie. Wait for those crotchets and then play the quavers thereafter. Right, let's do it. Ready, one, two, one, two, three and four. One and two and three, four. One and two and three and four. One, two, three and four. And that's it. And then our last one, oh, next I can hear my daughter itching to get in here, is same again, oh, geez, oh, as the other exercises, we're bringing in our rests and our dots and cuts again. So let's count it. We're going to go one, two, and three, day four. One, day two, and three, and four. One, and two, three, four. One, and two. Three, day four. And that would be it. So let's do it. All right, let's go for it. Big effort for the last one. Here we go. One, two, go. One, two, and three, day four. One, day two, and three, and four. One, and two, three, four. One, and two, three, day four. And that's it. Okay. So as always... With things like this, all right, as we've been going on, the longer we've been going, the more tired you'll start to feel, all right, because I'm looking at some folk there, you can see they're starting to look a wee bit tired, all right, that was about just under an hour, that was 55 minutes we just done there, so that's quite a long time. When I put this up in the classroom, you don't have to play along to the entire video in one sitting, all right, you really don't need to, but the great thing about me recording it is that when it gets closer to the exams, all right, so say, what are we now, Feb February yet? No, still January, but um, no, it's 1st of February today. Aye. Say we end up doing our exams in March, all right, say we do them in April, right? It might not be, don't panic, all right, but whenever we do them, I'll probably send you this video again and say, right, let's start playing through that video just so we can get comfortable with all the exercises before we get assessed, okay? And if you found all of them very, very easy, then well done you for a first start. Um, but also, it means that you don't have to stress about it as much. Right, it won't take you long to get them going again. 
if there's some of them you found a bit tricky, then maybe spend a bit more time on the ones that you found tricky. Okay? And I'm going to leave it at that. But that was good fun. All right. I know that it's just me talking and nobody's really got to talk. But I think we'll, we'll benefit from that in the long run purely through the fact that every single exercise that we've done there is something that you're going to play. All right. So I'm going to leave it at that. And I will see you all either this week or next week. Okay. Right, see you all soon.